VO2max is one of the most important determinants of aerobic fitness. Improving your VO2max will enhance the capacity of your body to work at high intensities. So in this video, I will lay out how to improve your VO2max using two simple steps. That said, the steps might be simple, but the training will be hard. All right, let's go. Hi everyone, I'm Komar. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich, based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied and taught advanced topics of exercise physiology. So let's start with the first simple step in the progress of improving your VO2 max. And that is determining your FTP of your functional threshold power. In literature and in training literature mostly, this has been described by doing an all-out time trial on the bike or on the rower where you record your average watts and then take 95% of that value. That 95% that is important also for the remainder of the video. The goal of this test is to estimate your maximal lactate steady state. And what exactly is that? That is, let's say, the highest point where there is a balance between lactate production from the anaerobic system, the glycolysis, and aerobic lactate oxidation or usage of lactate by the mostly type 1 muscle fibers. And this maximal lactate steady state represents well an intensity that you can sustain for 30 to 40 minutes. So think about riding up a long mountain in the Tour de France, right? 30 minutes, 40 minutes, all out effort. This would be for the riders close to their maximal lactate steady state, where the lactate stays within a certain range, four to five to six millimolar per liter. If they would increase the intensity, you see that also in endurance sports, then they go over their limit and actually have to decrease their pace substantially. That is also why athletes like Remco Evenepoel try to limit their, let's say, going into the red from the beginning of the mountain, because otherwise they would increase their lactate too much, anaerobic metabolism would be too much used, and obviously they would decrease their performance over a time. But obviously, during an FTP test, you will be higher than this maximal lactate steady state, as you can see here in this graph, because it's only 20 minutes and a certain amount of energy is coming from anaerobic energy production. So that's why we take 95%. But that obviously is not perfect, because every athlete is different. For example, I took this from the Training Peaks website. I will also link the article in the description because it's actually really nice. And what they show is that you have an endurance athlete, or endurance type cyclist, both were endurance athletes, and one was uh, endurance type, and one was more a sprint anaerobic type a track cyclist. And both had uh, an FTP, so an average test, not FTP, average test of 20 minutes was 279 watts for the endurance person, and the other one was quite close at 262 watts, all right? So quite close FTP. But then when they measured their true FTP, so the energy they could produce throughout 40 minutes without increasing their lactate, this was for the endurance type athlete exactly 96%, so it's almost 95% of the average at 20 minutes. So for him or her, this was perfect, right? It was 268 watts. But, and that is also interesting, for a CrossFit or a more strength-based population that is uh, watching these videos, for the sprint anaerobic type, his through FTP was 238 watts. And he could sustain this for, let me see, 75 minutes, all right? And this equated to 90% of their uh, average 20-minute watt. So the more, I would say, strength-based the athlete is, the less endurance type trained, the more total energy of this 20 minute time trial will come from anaerobic sources. So the true FTP will probably be lower than 95 percentile. That's important and something to consider later. So back to our simple steps. So how do you determine then your FTP? As I already said, method one would be 20 minutes all out on a test, on a bike, uh, on an erg, on a rower, on a ski, whatever machine you want to use, you can even run. But obviously not every not everyone is suited for that. If you have an, a beginner athlete and you put them on a, on a bike for 20 minutes, it probably will not represent well their true FTP or maximal lactate steady state because they're not used to it. So a second method, what is for most CrossFit athletes or at least high intensity athletes probably better suited, would be to do eight minutes all out, then 
10 minute rest and then again 8 minute all out. And the goal is to have similar watts or intensities in the first 8 minutes and the last uh, 8 minutes. You take the average of both, again take 95% according to the, the incorrect calculations, but at least it's close to, to, to being well, well balanced. And that would be your FTP method two. And then maybe interesting, but, but, but less relevant for this video, would be method three. It would be some kind of functional FTP. That's something I've been thinking about quite a lot. And then you can, for example, do a 20 minute MRAM, for example, Cindy, right? And you do five pull-ups, 10 push-ups and 15 air squats continuously. What is important here, very important, that you pick movements where you can keep moving. So upper body pulling, pushing, some squats, etc., where you never have to rest. So if you find it difficult to do 10 push-ups in a row or like for 20 rounds, you probably are better off doing such a test with knee push-ups. So that would be three methods of measuring or assessing your FTP, step one. So then we're looking at step two, and that is actually improving your VO2 max using intervals uh, based on your FTP. And first we have to look at what is your VO2 max, and VO2 max, very simply described, is the maximal amount of oxygen the body can take up during maximal exercise. And with intensity, oxygen uptake measured with a mask, for example, goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, until you reach a plateau, and that would be your VO2 max. And in elite cyclists, this will be much higher than, for example, in strength athletes, obviously, because of their adaptations to training. If you transpose the lactate curve on this, we know that the maximal lactate steady state or the FTP, depending a little bit on how you see it, not so important here, would be well before your true VO2 max. So for example, I know my VO2 max will be around 310 watts. At this intensity, I will reach my VO2 max, for example, in an exercise test to exhaustion. But my FTP will be much before that, all right? So that's something to take into consideration when using the FTP to improve your VO2 max. Then we have to look at the literature. What are actually the best intervals to do to improve your VO2 max? Do you actually have to do intervals? Maybe you can just do some long endurance zone two sessions or other types of intervals. And most of the, the, the data, according to uh, meta-analysis or overview studies, say that the intervals should be pretty long. So not 10 seconds or 20 seconds, but more than two minutes. I would argue even three to four minutes. And it would be at pretty high volume. So the total work time during your interval should be more than 15 minutes of work. Again, this is in relatively untrained population. So if you are a good athlete, you probably have to increase that even more. And yeah, you have to train at least four weeks, even more, obviously, uh, depending on uh, the, the trainability and how well the athlete was trained. Indeed, it seems that longer intervals at high intensity are better than very short intervals at extremely high intensity, for example, 140% of your VO2 max. So that would be your typical sit interval training. So how could you then use that information to design your intervals? And as I said, I want to keep it simple, so I want to base my intervals on FTP, so on my functional threshold power. And if you are more of an endurance type athlete, so you're better at workouts that are long, that are pretty light and you just can keep going, you can start off by doing four times five minutes of work with each time four minutes of rest at 117, 115, 117 percent of your FTP. That would be a good starting point where you are working above your FTP close to your VO2 max so you will improve your VO2 max on the longer term. Important, these are hard intervals. I mean, you will feel this. Your lactate will increase each interval. You will recover, but uh, I can assure you this is hard. If I had to do such an interval, starting at 117% of my FTP, I could not make it. For me, this is too high because a large percentage of my FTP would be from anaerobic sources. So I actually have to decrease the percentage because I am more genetically predisposed to being a strength athlete compared to more of an endurance athlete. So for the strength athletes, I would decrease this percentage and starting at 110% of your FTP, five times four with four minutes of rest. So that would be an overview depending on how you are trained and what your training background is. So people in the comments on, on previous videos always ask me, hey, can you please summarize this? Uh, because you sometimes forget the summarizing table. 
So here is a summarizing table looking at the different steps. So you first want to do just in the gym, on your own, with some music, determine your FTP, which would be, would be a 20 minute all out test, two times eight minutes or functional uh, movements. You can do that, as I said, on the bike, erg, rower or running. And a pro tip that I can give you is to tape the screen as I'm doing here in the video, where you can only see the time remaining of the interval and not your pace. Because if you would redo the FTP, which is a very good test to actually redo, you don't want to know your actual pace you're working on because then you just have a test bias and then you always improve. But if you don't know and you just have to feel the pace, but just have to write the red line based on feeling, I think according to our experience, that's the best way to do such an FTP. And then when you know your FTP, you take 95% of that. For example, that's an average. If you are more an endurance athlete, you could take 97, 98. If you are a strength athlete, you can go to an 88, 90%. So that's a bit arbitrary. Obviously, I don't know the type of athlete you are. And then in step two, you do intervals based on your FTP, where you, do, where you start, for example, at four times four or five times five minutes on with four minutes of rest. And then you can build this up by one, increasing the intervals throughout the weeks or increasing the percentage of FTP, so the intensity of the intervals, because you always want to progressively overload. So that would be a great way to improve your VO2 max over the longer term. If you're interested in such a protocol, we actually developed a VO2 max specific training protocol, as well as an endurance type threshold training protocol in our training programs a catalog. You know, at What Science Now, we're trying to build out uh, different ways of training for different types of athletes, so functional athletes, more endurance athletes, and strength athletes. And if you're interested in looking at such a training program, we have first sample weeks that you can just freely download, or if you're interested in actually buying it, we have also a code that only runs one more month, so be quick to get 15% off of your first training plan. So if you're interested, just check the first link in the description. You can get fit while also supporting the page. So thank you for that. Good, that was already it from me today. Hope you get a lot of value out of this video. If you did, give us a quick like and also subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much for watching until the end. If you want to learn more deeply about view to max and why view to max is actually quite low in high profile CrossFit athletes, just watch the video right here.